You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast. I am your host, Jim Coppinger, and with me in the studio today, as always, is the always cheerful and effervescent Mr. Rocco Parisi. Oh, did you have to say that? Wow. You know, I just finished telling him how cheerful you are, and that's the best you can come back with. <laughs> really? Wow, man. Way to just step on my intro. Nice. <laughs> nice. You know, here I think about all the nice things I can say about you. And, you know, I thought about a lot of the negative things I could say about you, but I even figured that would be nice, and then your wife would be mad at me. And I actually like her, so I figured I'd be good to you today. And uh, you step all over my kind intro. All so right. rude. Good, good morning, fine people. There you go. See? Much better. See? This way it's not like I'm talking to the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you know what, though? Think about that. Think about how popular it would be if you were actually dead. Could you imagine doing this, a podcast with a ghost? We'd be like, remember the old show, The Ghost and Mrs. Muir would be Jim and the Ghost of Rocco. Oh, boy. Now he's getting all creepy on me, people. Oh, come on. That would be cool as hell. <laughs> See, we'd have a lot of people. Listen, I'm not saying I wish you dead, but maybe if you were a little less alive, you know, we could make a little more money. I'm just saying. There's some potential. <laughs> Consider it. So I'm just, just don't dismiss it out of hand. Consider being a little less living. Is all I want to say. All righty then. <laughs> so anyway, what are we talking about today? <laughs> ah, that's a good question. What are we talking? Oh, so today we're talking about um, cross-platform versus single-file type model designs. Right. In other words, we're going to get into talking about whether you want to work in a single software package or multiple software packages, and that's what everybody wants. But we're going to talk about what's what's good and what's bad. Okay. So with that said, let let's get into it. So um, so the reason we brought this topic up is you know one of the the complaints that I get all the time when I'm working with our CAD clients is that they absolutely hate the the sheer number of software packages that they have to buy and learn and you know struggle to master. Um, but you know there still seems to be a, a real strong belief in our industry and I, and I really I believe it's pushed by the software manufacturers um, that you can increase your output, you can make more money, you can get things done faster you know and, and all you need to do is buy just just one more one more software package. You know, uh, you know, the problem, of course, is that, you know, that the additional software package almost never makes your life easier. Um, and in reality, I mean, I really do believe that for the most part, they really just slow things down because of the associated learning curve that goes along with them. Um, I think if you stop and you think about any CAD package that you've ever worked in, right, think about, you know, how many commands does that system have? Right? How many workflows did you have to you know, figure out using combinations of dozens of those different tools just to get your job done? All right, now, if you take that and you consider uh, you know, if you have to work across three or four different CAD design systems to get your project done, all right, that kind of gives you an, an idea of how difficult it can be for the day-to-day -day operational CAD people and designers right, who have to work uh, on these cross-platform multiple software systems. All right, but really, and, and, and even that, that's just kind of the beginning, all right? Because that's just talking about just learning the basic commands. Because, you know, if, if you do have to work cross-platform, it's not just the commands. You know, you, you need to consider things like the time it takes to convert files from one system to another. All right, the fact that there are entirely different workflows in each of those softwares. Uh, you, you run the risk of data loss every time you have to do any kind of a conversion or opening in a different system. Um, you get inconsistent entity display and editing. You wind up with proxy objects and things that don't print or fonts that are missing so things don't display. You know, I mean, sometimes it, it, it can even mean having to start from scratch, you know, really just doing your design all over again just to get the data that you've already created into some editable format in a different CAD software. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, right, for every software that you use on your design, you might as well just go ahead and deduct 25% of your profits because you're going to lose that at a bare minimum, you know. So, so Rocco, um, again, you know, you, you handle most of the feedback from our clients. So coming from that base, how many of our clients are using 
multiple design systems and which ones do you do you find are the most common in both uh, the AEC, the architectural design world and the in engineering versus the manufacturing? What are the big players there and, and how many systems are they using? Yeah, on, on the CAD side, I within both manufacturing and, and architecture engineering <clears throat> construction, I, I find that there are at least they're using at least two. Now, on the manufacturing side, it's 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 usually you know AutoCAD and, and Inventor or AutoCAD and and SolidWorks or just just BricsCAD. And uh, on on the AEC side, it's you know it's usually AutoCAD and and, and Revit um, or or just just BricsCAD. But it's uh, yeah, it's definitely you know more than one CAD platform, but they they really struggle to try to get everybody to use one and it's not not an easy task no it's not i mean it's 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 pretty much all of us for decades now have had to use multiple platforms um and i think you hit on on you know the perfect you know the prime example of of a, of a cross-platform practice right and it's really really common in the architectural space right? i i deal with a lot of clients who begin um they do their preliminary design using a really user-friendly tool like SketchUp, right, from Google to do spatial layout, right? Gives them a quick, easy way to do kind of a 3D rough out. Um, and you can show your client these, you know, really cool renderings of what the final building will look like. It's a real simple tool to use. It's great for presentation and preliminary layout. Um, you know, and, and then once the client approves that concept and you're ready to go to design, everybody winds up going from there. They have to go back to Revit. And then they have to start the entire modeling process over again from scratch, right? In an entirely new system, right? So, I mean, obviously, you know, Revit is a, it's a high-end 3D modeling BIM system, right? That has its own unique workflow, right? That your, your CAD people are going to have to learn, right? And, and, and I think that's where a lot of folks still struggle with or, or even avoid Revit because of that, that level of complexity in learning. Um, but even clients who are already good in Revit, Okay, they, they know it, they have it down, they're, good, they're fast with it, they know how to generate it. I still see a crazy number of them taking an additional step. Right? They take the output of the Revit plans, details, etc., and they still push them forward into a 2D system like you were saying, you know, basic AutoCAD, um, you know, to do final setup, annotation, and presentation, right? Adding all the notes and borders and all that. Um, and, and Revit will do that stuff, but I hear constantly from clients, that, uh, clients excuse me, that they just don't feel like Revit, it, its presentation tools, is, it's not good enough. It takes too long uh, to generate final construction documents. They can't get it to where they need. You know, and, and that means that most architectural firms right, and design firms out there are using at least three different softwares. Right, They're going from you know, SketchUp to Revit to AutoCAD again. Um, and, and, and then on top of that, you have a lot of those who are using more specialized verticals. Uh, you know, things, special programs for HVAC and MEP and structural and another one for engineering analysis, right? So you're talking, you know, maybe possibly six or seven or eight different software packages that your designers are having to work on and learn and understand and modify. And then, the, you know, the owners always get on the phone with me and they're always wondering, why, why can't I get my jobs done on time and on budget? Well, <laughs> that's why, right? There's just, you're, you're asking too much for people to know and understand and be able to work with effectively. So... And I think, you know, the, the, in answer to this, because this is very common, is that every company is facing this issue. Um, I think we've been seeing a big shift in the CAD industry where there are a lot of smaller, more responsive CAD systems uh, that are moving away from that multi-platform model into the concept of single file type models. Uh, in, in other words, the idea is, is you use one primary software package with one set of tools that will handle all your design needs, all right? And, and it's it's really done in two different ways, um, and it, you know different approaches by different uh, developers. Um, but it's either done as a series of upgrade modules that you 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 get additional functionality for, or as uh, th third party plugins that give you advanced features inside the CAD systems you already have, all right? Um, and and these single file type systems um, integrate with and are just flat out use, right, the, the tools in, in the CAD system that your staff already knows, right? That's the idea behind this, this single file type model. Uh, so, Rocco, we, we actually work with two uh, big single file type models, uh, CAD systems here at Zentech, right? We do both um, Bricks CAD and Civil Site Design, right? And, and the one is modular and the other is plug-in. All right. Can you know? Can you tell everybody? You know, explain for us what is the difference in terms of how they would buy and implement those two different types of systems. 
Yeah, well, well, Brick's CAD is is sold either either under a perpetual license structure, meaning a permanent license structure. You buy it once, you own it, you install it on your system, and it, and it sits on your core system, uh, much like like Autodesk products do as well. Um, so so those are, are are permanent. I mean, it's a core foundation for what you're using, uh, versus uh, a plug-in product like like Civil Site Design uh, runs on top of. AutoCAD, uh, BricsCAD, or, or Civil 3D, um, so it plugs right in to your to your existing platform. Right. Yeah, and, and something you know, like the the BricsCAD, it's a single source system in that you know you kind of buy you, you you put in the base level, and then as you need more and more features, you're not installing secondary different packages. You're just enabling more and more tools as you kind of upgrade your way up the food chain, so to speak. Right. So that that that's the other aspect of that that I think is really important, right? You can buy one 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 system and then you're turning things on and off. Um, all right. So I think with that, I think that's a good spot for us to uh, break for a commercial and listen to today's sponsor. And we will be back in just a minute with more of the Cattle Call podcast. All right, everybody. Today's episode of the Cattle Call podcast is brought to you by Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. We're bringing ourselves to you. Aren't we nice? So we wanted to talk to you guys today about uh, some of the things that we offer at Zentech Consultants. In particular, we wanted to talk to you today about our offerings around developing and upgrading your CAD standards. We are here to help you guys with all of your CAD standard needs from ongoing drafting and design support to block and library development, full CAD standards development, all right, CAD version upgrades, really whatever it is that you guys need when it comes to developing, implementing, and tweaking your current CAD standards. Or like I said, if you don't have any yet, we can help you build them from scratch. So Rocco, why don't you tell all the good folks how they can reach out to us and start that conversation? Yeah, there's a lot of information people on our website, zentechconsultants.net. That's Z-E-N-T-E-K, consultants.net. Uh, or you can give us a call, 866-824-4459, or even drop us an email, sales at zentechconsultants.net. Ooh, nice. Cat standards from Zentech Consultants. You're listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zentech Consultants. All right, so... Today, we're talking about uh, cross-platform versus single CAD or, or file CAD structures. Um, so as always, let's go ahead and take a look at what the interwebs have to say about the maths for this topic. All right? So I did a little bit of research this time, Rocco, from uh, Arc Career and Autodesk. Okay? Um, so we start off with the fact that vanilla AutoCAD, right? standard you know, base AutoCAD, has um, 1,500 individual commands and 1,250 variable settings. Okay, that's a lot of tools to learn. Uh, yeah. Rev- Revit has over a thousand commands and eighty distinct workflows. Okay, um, generally speaking, you know, from from our career, it takes a new user between one and five years of full time use to master Revit to to really become reliable and good at it. Right, uh, it takes an experienced CAD user an additional year. It's longer for someone who's got a good CAD background because they have to unlearn the old 2D CAD processes that they're used to. You actually get a, a faster spin up on people who've never used a product like Revit before, right? And here's the thing, and this is to me the most important uh, thing that I came across here. Every time you move a design between software systems, the likelihood of design error goes up by 15%, okay? Right? That is a lot of potential lost time and lost money moving between systems. And, and it's a lot of info that you're expecting your CAD staff to hold inside their brains. All right? you, know, you get a guy like me who just doesn't have that much brain space. Uh, my brain doesn't work all that well, Rocco will tell you. Um, you know, it's it's going to be tough to hold on to all of that. So you know, if you're finding that your productivity is down and your errors are up, don't blame your design staff, right? Take a look at the tools that you're making them use, okay? Yeah, that, that, that's that's pretty, I mean, that, that some people find that, that data to be um, I- inaccurate, but, you know, it's, it is very true. And, and, and I think uh, people who are a little bit on the outskirts at some level find it to be, to be false. But, 
you know, I, I had a call from a, from a prospect a couple of weeks ago, and, and, and he's a high-level manager, and he says, I, you know, I want my people to, you know, to move up to Revit. And, you know, they, they're telling me that it's going to take, you know, five years to, to really learn it, you know. And, and, and what do you think? Is that really true? And I'm like, well, I, honestly, it is. You know, it's, uh, you know, you, your people know what they know, and they're very good at what they're what they're doing and in, 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 in understanding and using AutoCAD, but... It's a different monster. Using Revit alone is a different monster. It's going to yeah. take them time to ramp up. Yep. And and again, you're like, yeah, sure. Can they figure it out and get the basics cobbled out in six months? Right. Yeah. But if you want them to be good, productive, you know, turning out good product, correct designs without constant errors and mistake, yep, you're looking at years worth of time. Yeah, I mean, really, it's 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 like taking a, a, a mechanic, right? A guy who's worked on, you know, Ford Pintos for the last 20 years and tell him, okay, now I want you to become a mechanic for airplanes. They're both engines, but they're not the same. You know, there's there's a huge learning curve involved. Can they eventually get it? Sure. But it's going to take a lot more time than you think. Um, so, like I said, you know, Rocker, we, we, we do. We have this discussion a lot with our clients, right? So, how do our clients respond to the idea of, you know, eliminating software and going towards the single file type structure. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they absolutely love the idea of cost savings, right? Save money. Um, we, you know, fewer, less software, you know, less, less money we're spending. But do you find that they're still resistant to the idea of, of a big change like that in general? Um, I don't think they're resistant to the idea, but they are resistant to, to the change because it, it, it's not an easy change. It's, it's a complex um, process when you're talking about you know, systems, Autodesk systems, which are, are fantastic at what they do. Um, but it's, it, it, it is a complicated process. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but, I, you know, to my mind, I, I think it's really about convincing people that change is not always a bad thing. Right? Now, you know, I, I know everybody who's ever bought a piece of software has, you know, heard that from, from the salespeople, <coughs> like Rocco. Uh, but, but nice. I, I, nice. Okay. I'll be nice. Uh, but, but I really, I, I'm putting this slightly differently. I mean, this a little bit different than, than the, the sales folks will change is positive, but only when it makes your job easier. Okay. And the concept of adding tools is never making your job easier. Okay. Uh, any type of change or upgrade to your systems and your workflow has to be counterbalanced by the elimination of other systems and processes. Okay, um, you know, it, it's trying to find an equation, right? One side has to balance the other. What you add on one side, you have to take away on the other side. Right? And and I, and I think that anyone who tells you that a new system adding more will solve your problems, they're they're selling something. Right, um, but I do think that that everybody in our industry, you need to be open to change. Right, software and tech is always growing, always adding new tools and new concepts, which can be extremely beneficial. Right, um, and I think that refusing to look at those just because you're afraid of losing productivity during the learning period, that I think that's a recipe for disaster. Right, um, you, know, it, it, you know, like I said, I, I like drawing correlations. Right, it's it's like the folks who had you know horse-drawn carriages who refused to shift to work trucks because they thought learning to drive would take too long. Right, but you got to look at you know where are those people today? Right, you, you you've got to stay up with the times. You got to change, but like I said, you got to eliminate as you add. Um, and I think that that you know while single file type systems are a change, sure, um, but I think they're counter counterbalanced by the reduction in time and effort and cost that you achieve by removing multiple software systems from your process. Um, I think if you can get all of your tools into one system, working on you know, a single file, then you've eliminated you know, a ton of potential error, okay? And you've, you know, uh, you've eliminated a ton of lost revenue, and you're giving your staff the opportunity to focus on becoming experts in one set of tools Instead of you know forever scrambling to be yeah, somewhat proficient <laughs> in five or six different software packages, you know. Um, so you know, I, like I said, I think I'm going to sum it up here today uh, by trying to put it in real world terms, right? So if, if you need to put together 
a piece of furniture in your house, you know, which we've all done. We've all been to Ikea. Um, you know, are you okay with having, you know, some metric bolts and some imperial bolts? Uh, you know, is it cool if half of the screws are Phillips head while some are standard and others need hex wrenches? You know, I mean, would, would any of us buy that product willingly, right? So if you wouldn't do that for the cheap Ikea piece of furniture, so then why do we do exactly that? in our design businesses, right? Why do we let salespeople <coughs> like Rocco uh, convince us to use multiple systems when one consistent software will give you everything that you need? And that's what, what I want to leave you guys thinking about today. That and making fun of Rocco, which, you know, always makes my day. Rocco, uh, well, I, this is being recorded, so, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I get to see how mean he is to me. I'm always mean to Rocco. It's, it's how I get through the day. We all have to have our little entertainments. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you have anything else you want to throw in here today? No, no. Now that you've insulted me, I'm done. All right. If my insult is in for the day, then I'm good as well. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you on the next episode of the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody, today's cattle call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net. Or you can even call us, 866-824-4459. Excellent. We look forward to hearing from you all.